Larry yeah, let's crack it open. Shit. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Larry Moa here on two beers and a mic, man. <laughs> Fuck, here, cheers, man. Cheers, yeah, man. cheers. For sure. I cannot believe I'm having beer with an old buddy from high school. Not even high school, middle school, right? You want to be yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, middle school, dude. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. I'm glad, glad to be here. Glad to be on. How the hell are you, man? Good, man. Just chilling, dude. So you said you went for after high school, you went to Nyack College in New York. Right. Why'd you come back? <laughs> <laughs> dude, New York is hella expensive, man. Yeah. You have no idea. Like, minimum wage. Okay, min- you thought minimum wage here was bad in California? Dude, minimum wage, like, um, so I held, like, a few part-time jobs at, like, at my college, right? Minimum wage is $7.25. Back in 2012. Back in 2012, 2011, 725. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's poverty right there. Yeah, dude, it was was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. So they do, I can't. So how long were you out there? Uh, I only stayed there till I finished school. So like four years. What part of New York were you in? It was like... Like a maybe like literally ten minutes away from Jersey, but it was, it was across from. That's from, not New York. It's New York. That's not New it's York. Ten, it's, okay, it was forty minutes away from the city. Okay. It was a, it was across the Hudson River, right? Because the Hudson River right. kind of separates uh, New York City from the rest of New York and New Jersey, right? So it was like forty minutes away from there. So this is how much I know about New York, right? You're right. I watch Friends, so yep. I know Central Park, mm-hmm. Park, whatever. Yep. And then, the side of Manhattan. Mm-hmm. So in between that, where are you? Are you at all in there? Out, outside. Out, out, outside of that city. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. That's quite a culture shock, man. So mm-hmm. you were by yourself? like. Uh, no, I was actually with my sister. Like, that was literally the only reason why my parents let me go out of state. So you guys both were in the same college at mm-hmm. the same time? Yep. Damn, dude. I would have never thought, like... Well, so you, you were always a bright guy. Uh, you were always doing shit in high school and stuff. I just didn't kind of sort of get yeah. out of your comfort zone <laughs> so much and mm-hmm. completely not just go to another state. That's like across the country. Yeah, that's insane. So like, you did movies and stuff out there, or like, what did you study? Um, originally, I actually wanted to work with teens, like you know, youth ministry. So like, like working with kids, teens, whatever. Oh, this yeah. Why would you want to do that? I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but but because like because that was like for me that was a big thing. Like I had a lot of like people. People who uh, who I looked up to like as a teen, I was like, you know, I want to kind of be like that, right? Who are some of the people you looked up to? Um, well, uh, back in high school, I was more active with my church, so that's what I did. And um, with Naya College, Naya College was like a like a church institution, I guess. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's what inspired me. But when I did it, when I started studying, I'm like, dude, like. I can't do this, man. This shit is way too hard. I can't. I can't work with kids. I can't work with teens, at least. Well, so. I mean, you know, it's different, right? To you, it's one thing to read about it, right? So another just to be there since the person you're in front right, of, right? Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So what, what happens afterwards? You like fuck these kids? Man. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, um, I I was thinking. I had a friend who was like in the communications department. Right? She did TV film production, and I saw her like doing all this stuff. I was like, dude, like that's pretty cool. Like, you know, I I want I want to try that. And so, um, I had a friend kind of like to support me, encourage me, say, you know, if you want to switch, just do it, man. You're only like you're literally only your first year. Like by my freshman year is when I wanted to switch. So I switched my sophomore year. I switched to communications. Right. I just kind of stuck with that throughout throughout. Was well, it a thing like shit? I'm already in New York. I can't go back. Did, was it going back ever an option? Like coming back to Sacramento? Uh, coming back to Sac, I would only come back to Sac for like vacations or like yeah, but but like in terms of like actually like that like coming back. Are you coming back to Sacramento for vacations? <laughs> Boy, that American River sure looks beautiful. Yeah, man. but see, here's the thing though. Like, like for us, they kicked us out. But like when there was Thanksgiving or Christmas vacation, oh, you leave the yeah, dorms? yeah, they, they wouldn't let us stay in the dorms. Um, uh, probably because they they didn't have staffing like on yeah, campus. Yeah. So I was like, okay, understandable. It's fine. So you went in communications. That's that's what is like. How did you come up with communications? Uh, that was the only major that offered TV and film production. Uh, so like communications deals with like journalism, right? Um, making speeches. Management, all that, all that stuff. I remember you were into like anime and all that stuff in high school. Mm-hmm. Did you what? Else, did you what else did you do? Like that would uh, hint that you were. You, oh, were, oh, you, oh. were you in like music and stuff? Uh, I was a little bit into music, right? I took piano in high school, yeah, but um, I knew you took something. Yeah, yeah, but I actually did a lot of writing in high school. So like, like I was, I was writing books and I shared them a lot with like a lot of high school buddies, high school, high school friends. Um, but like that that sort of avenue of like telling stories like you know like this is what i want people to learn from my experience that sort of thing uh that was kind of what 
uh, shot me towards like doing communications. Well, so we'll like stay in high school for a bit because mm-hmm. uh, that's just really nostalgic. <laughs> How uh, like what were you writing about in high school? Mm-hmm. One of the big things I wrote in high school. Um, some like anime weebie shit, you know how it is. <laughs> but like, but like, um, it's a, one of the stories I wrote that I really like because I actually actually finished the goddamn book, like completely finished it, like seventy pages or something, right? But was that completely finished, like yeah. two hundred page book, seventy pages? <laughs> 70, dude, seventy pages is hell hard. Four feet font, double space. <laughs> <laughs> 12 font, 12 font, 12 font, single space, <laughs> like, like it's it's definitely a lot bigger if you spread down a book, right? Okay. But basically, I, I worked on that story. That story just basically talked about, like, uh, like, high schoolers trying to figure out, like, what's going on with their lives and trying to figure out, you know, why are these people mean, why are these people bullies, why are these people good people, etc. Um, Do you have experience like, in that stuff? Not really, you but, but, like, no, no, but, but, like, um... Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I didn't write the story from like the main character's perspective. I always wrote it from the bad guy's perspective. Oh. Yeah, and that really opened me up. Like, you know what? Like, if I have some beef with people, or if I have trouble, or if I have conflicts with others, like, you know, it's not even. It's just that we just have different interests. You know, we just have different perspectives. That's all it really is. Well, if it's two people, it's the it's the third person's eyeball decide who's the good and bad person. Right. Right. Exactly. If me and you have a conflict, to me you're the bad guy, and to you I'm the bad guy. Right? Mm-hmm. But someone else from the outside can outside, go and say like, yeah, oh that. yeah, that's completely different, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and that's where I actually like when I realized that. That's when I realized that's like you know maybe that's something I kind of want to expand on. You know, and that's why I got into to film. That's why I got into um, you know doing t- uh, doing like TV film production because I want to be able to kind of understand all those perspectives and kind of just tell those stories. That's incredible, man. So then why did you, if you already had that kind of figured out throughout your high school and stuff, why were you trying to help out these teens? <laughs> you, okay, honest, do you felt like at the time that it ever clicked that maybe you're too young to do that? Probably, yeah. yeah I, I think that was the big thing, too. Because we're like 17, 18, we're still trying to figure our own stuff mm-hmm. out. You know? Right, exactly. I see a lot of the guys, like, uh, maybe early 20s who are more worried about giving back than really building their own first. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that really scares me because like I'm probably 30 this year Mm -hmm. because God sometimes is not that good. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, you know, it's amazing my looking at myself now and looking back when I was that age, like how much you really don't know. Right. You know, you only know what you know at that point and that isn't a whole lot. Right. So it's like, what kind of impact were you looking to make early on in people's lives? If anything, it was really to kind of be like someone they can come to if um, if they have any questions about just anything really. And like like literally, when I went to church, there was this one kid who had that attachment to me. I had no idea I even made that kind of a, a impact on this kid, you know, because I was like. Because um, he was he was very quiet, was very similar to me, right? Just just yeah. very quiet, very just kind of to himself. But like he would always he'd always be coming to me for like questions for certain things. I'm like, like why does this kid always keep coming to me, right? So like I'm, I'm like I'm thinking to myself, I want to do this, but I don't even see it right in front of me, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was just like one of those things I realized. Um, but being being able to kind of make that kind of impact, I realized that you don't have to be that kind of be in that particular field to even do it. Like it could be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what I realized. Like, man, I don't need to study. I mean, I don't need to study to make an impact on people. You know, I just that, you know, yeah, people. you don't need to study because it's like when you're making that impact, you're just talking stuff out of right. about your own life, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, like I didn't even try to even I didn't even try to make an impact on this kid, but I did, and, and that's that's the beauty of it. You know what I mean? Did you have someone that like? Was that person for you that you went to in that church group? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had, I had a few. Right. Uh, yeah, one of them was um, my youth pastor at the time. Like, very, very open. Like, even even if I say, like, the most outlandish thing that wasn't very church what, appropriate, what I guess. What outlandish things were you saying back then? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not very outlandish <laughs> yeah. now. But, but <laughs> <laughs> Not, nothing outlandish, but it sounds very like heretical. I guess you can say mm-hmm. like like it's very like like it, within like church communities in general. There's like been like this big trend of like young adults kind of leaving the church, right? Like those were the questions I had. Like I started doubting like a lot of things, mm-hmm. and I just had a lot of questions like that. And so that's what I meant by the outlandish. Because okay. why are they leaving? Or yeah, like why they're leaving, and why I should keep believing. 
you know what I mean? Oh, wow. You're really question going against Yeah. Me. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, like, exactly. Like, so, I had, like, those kind of questions. And he didn't, he never really, um, you know, he never, like, condemned me or said you shouldn't think those yeah. things. Right? He was very open to it, you know? And I was like, that's very different. Because most people, when I would try to even bring up these kind of ideas, they would just be completely against me. Well, that's the easy thing to do, is just, like, mm -hmm. completely push it off. And be like, right. this is horrible. How dare you have these thoughts? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I actually had that experience in college, too. Yeah. Like, yeah, because, um... Like, I wrote an essay about, uh, like, Old Testament or whatever, right? The, the Bible stuff. And I think I said something, and I got an F on that paper. Because it went against kind of like what the core beliefs of what that college was which I understand but also I think it offended the professor too oh. so I'm like ooh like I old -timer or? Uh, he's a little older but like he's experienced I guess you can say you know with those with those things so I'm like experienced okay. in God? I guess <laughs> <laughs> okay. so how did that go? did you like push back? Or no I didn't push back I was, I was like shit maybe I shouldn't talk about this stuff anymore so at, yeah. at least to these people so you got a bad grade? yeah I, well just, just for that just for that just, just if you go back to that feeling that's how I felt throughout high school and middle school. <laughs> 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 the teacher just didn't agree with shit I was writing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible, man. Mm -hmm. See, like, I just cannot believe it. So, like, I've known this dude, uh, I don't know, we're going back, like, the other 12, 13 years, right? Yeah. A little farther. Yeah, and, like, so. this is probably, in that time, this is probably the most conversation. I mean, we've talked. Obviously, we hung out. We had classes together. hung out during lunch. Copied a lot of his shit. That's probably why I'm going to the <laughs> But this is amazing. Just to see, like, the transformation. Like, a guy in high school... Guy gets out of high school, life hits you, and the experiences that come out, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Man, um, so it's like okay, so you know, let's go, so let's go to New York. You're out there. Do you have like any crazy, any crazy stories or anything like that? Yeah, there was a time where, um, so me and my buddies we were playing this game called Grog. Okay, so in this game, there's like two or three people that are killers, so they have to go around and. Um, basically tag people right but then the people who are trying to get tagged they're trying to look for these flashlights like these batteries flashlights and once they get the flashlight together they just shine it on on the killers and they're dead right we were doing this right and but the thing is it was like maybe nine ten o'clock at night so hella dark pitch black it makes the game more fun right so we were doing it and we have to be out for we have to watch out for security campus, right? Because they'll just kind of patrol the campus. Yeah, you're a fucking rebel over there. <laughs> you did not have they'll... good friends around you. Bro. These people get you in trouble, bro. Okay. But yeah, so we have to be on the lookout for security campus, right? Yeah. And so we're like, okay, like if there's campus going out, it's like just just say something. We'll all just duck in that, right? Yeah. And then. I was kind of near the road because there's like this huge open soccer field and there's like this road right where where campus security just kind of goes by rolls by yeah. and then another car comes by and then we were thinking it's campus security so everyone tells the other people to run I look at it like no shit that's a cop that's a oh. police car oh. and then this police car rolls up tries, tries to ask us what we're doing the, the Sacramento Larry started coming out <laughs> 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 and then this police car rolls up and says, yeah. it's like, hey, what are you guys doing? Are all you guys out here? I was like, oh, damn it, we're going to... Yeah. <laughs> like, so we just we just literally just explained to him like everything what just happened like listen we're playing a game we're just we all we have to do is look for a flashlight we're not doing anything crazy we're just trying to celebrate the end of our midterms our finals you know and then the cop looks at all of us there's only like maybe a few of us like that were out everyone else was hiding <laughs> in the bushes he looked at all of us and he said alright go and have fun and just drives off I was like damn that was crazy we would have been caught arrested we, we never would have happened but Dude, that was some crazy experience. Damn. So I mean, they probably saw you guys. And probably okay. They're not gonna be doing anything too crazy. Right. Yeah. Right. They, they they ain't out there like selling whatever. <laughs> they ain't doing anything. Fuck. But see, because here's the thing about New York, right? Yeah. What I realized, like, just going from West Coast to East Coast, right? Dude, this is a huge like culture shock. Huge culture gap. Like a lot of people. Not a lot of diversity. Oh uh, no, there's diversity for sure. But like, I've noticed that. People don't trust me as much. Like even like faculty for some reason. I'm like I'm just gonna do this, but they don't trust me with something. It, 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 they always they always feel like, or I always felt like they always felt like I'm, I'm up to something. I'm like I'm not. I'm just doing this. They probably all read your paper. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it, it spreads work, you know, spreads fast, you know. But yeah, but huge huge culture huge culture shock. And I realized that not just with like adults, but with, like with just other just other students too. Like there's just. That's just how it is, you know. Why is that? Is it just because... Of, um, is it New York culture or is it because these people are coming from different places? 
Right, because it was the college I went to was actually pretty diverse, right? Because people from uh, even internationally, uh, people from all over the states too. But like, I think just New York in general, because a lot of the faculty staff members were from were from actually oh, New York. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I remember I did boot camp in uh, I think Missouri, and when I walked in, of course, I mean, like, it was fucking Asians everywhere. <laughs> wow, I walk in, dude. I, I remember like the second or third day, everybody, I'm like, we're all standing. Everybody's just like. And look at my best like, Prasad, 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 I was like, that's me, man. And they're like, oh, because they were like, hula hula, something like that, yeah. yeah. I was like, they're, that's what they were expecting. Yeah, they were yeah. like, where are you from? I was like, I'm from California. He goes, oh, like, uh, I don't remember, you, you might remember the, uh, the show um, Orange County used to be on the OC. Uh huh, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. So it was like 2009, I think. Mm -hmm. When did I go? 2009. So this is when it was like, oh, Fox, this is when. Uh, not everyone had cable. So, uh, yeah, he's like, hey, is everything all Calabunga? You guys like surf and all that stuff? I was like, nah, man, I'm like from Sacramento, you know? <laughs> we have, you know, we have like the American River, which is usually a puddle throughout the year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, because like, so I'm from, like, I'm from Fiji, Sacramento, you know, Sacramento, California. This is America to me. This is how I expect every place to be. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like, everyone's American. Everyone knows the same shit. And mm -hmm. it's just like, when I went out, it was crazy. Like, there's, everyone had these different thoughts. You right. weren't being racist to me through, mm -hmm. like, outright. They were more curious yeah. of what California mm -hmm. looks like. Right, right. I was like, oh, this is fucking weird, man. Yeah. Oh, except New York City. Like, anything you see on TV, on movies, that's like what New York City exactly looks like. Really? Yep. That's exactly what you think it is. Honestly. Crowded? That's how crowded? crowded? Yep, crowded. Central Park, you think it's like more wait out? No, it's crowded like Disneyland, dude. Central Park. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. Central Park is packed as hell. But Central Park is hella big. It's as big as Disneyland, I'd say. So how are people like surviving? I'm assuming if you gotta go somewhere, get up two hours earlier, you're like extra early prepared uh, yeah. for the game? Or yeah, what? I would assume so. But like I had a, one of my college buddies, like he lived in New York City after he graduated. Mm -hmm. He was working like three part-time jobs to try and make rent. I'm like, dude, like, that's just way too much, man. I can't be doing that. That's incredible. Yeah. So, like, a minimum wage back then was seven. If you consider, okay, I got a decent job, it's probably, like, 15, 16 then, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I think in the city, it's a little, it's a lot higher. I would assume so. It better be, but, like, outside, like... So, do you think you got accustomed to the culture at all? Like, used to it after four years? Oh, yeah, I got... <laughs> I got yeah. used to it after a while. There's some New York y taint and like slang and all that kind of stuff where when you come back here like oh you got you need to knock that shit out. Um we would say a lot of things are trash. Trash? Yeah. yeah so like cool. I know, but like I'm trying to think, dude, it's been so long. Yeah? Yeah, it's been so it's been Jesus, seven years. So you do a movie, so you went out there, graduated two thousand ten, you probably enrolled like two thousand eleven, twelve. Uh, no, I no, I enrolled twenty ten. Oh you were like you went right mm -hmm. after. Yeah, yeah, right after. Mm-hmm. That's a crazy shit. Mm -hmm. So I went on your page. You'll see his stuff throughout, even though he doesn't need a lot of promotion. <laughs> uh, so he has his Larry Moa page, which is the one I checked out. I saw uh, there's a short uh, trailer for a movie called Wolfgang. Mm -hmm. What is that about? Is it they gave off a sense of a little bit of bullying, the guy kind of staying in his shell, someone very Larry esque, and people talking, <laughs> like, hey, you know, you gotta open up. Like, Right, you know that that character, like, well, like whenever it's just more of Clark Kent waiting for Superman. <laughs> right? No, none of that. But uh, um, Jesus, that was for my senior project, right? And so for 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 all the seniors for for our class, like we were assigned to like do, do this project. I was like, okay, this is my big break. I'm gonna just go all out, do whatever I can. But Wolfgang is like this film. He like he gets into trouble with one of his friends because. Um, like one of his friends was supposed to walk another an, an, another female friend of his like to like like escort her like to her to her dorm or whatever but she, but she gets like beat up she right? gets beat up yeah she gets beat up and he gets so the main character me I get mad at my friend for saying why, why, why didn't you do it and because of that conflict he just kind of shuts himself away but he kind of learns that like even if he doesn't know how to say certain things or how to like deal with it yeah. like um he can just use like 
what he knows to be able to kind of mend that relationship. Mm. Yeah. Also, oh, just maybe heard what happened, just overreacted. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of him slowing down, realizing, oh, maybe I overreacted. I haven't seen the movie, but it's probably the girl's fault. She got her ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the trailer, man. Like that's. I saw it when it first came out. I went through and looked at like the outtakes and looked at everything mm-hmm. on the page. Right. Right. I was like, damn, this is Larry, dude. Because when I saw it back then, <laughs> I was like, wow, this is really cool. But I didn't mm-hmm. know about this shit, right? Right. Right. Because YouTube was like. Yeah. Someone, something, right? Yeah. I was looking at it yesterday. I looked at it today. I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like this is Larry. Because I remember Larry. You know, he had like a, a gray sweater, uh, like turtleneck tie, walkily boot mm-hmm. bag. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. reserved. Mm-hmm. I don't sure. want to say you were shy. You weren't shy. I, I was wouldn't say you were shy. I, I was. I say. I say. I'm pretty shy. I was pretty uh, shy. I was more. I wasn't shy around you because I knew you. But I was generally well, shy. You have yeah. to be really fucking quiet to be shy around. <laughs> <me>. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm pretty much. But that's okay. So you, you started doing the movie thing, and it's like, like, it, it, like it's legit Hollywood quality type of shit. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's too much, man. No, no. It's okay, too much. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> great. But I'm level, no, I'm just kidding. College, yeah. college production. College level. Produ- I thought it was amazing, man. And you wrote it, and mm-hmm. you, you wrote the script yourself. Yep, I wrote it. I wrote it. I directed it. You know um, what's crazy? You looked hella different in there too. Oh yeah. I saw something about you and your brother doing. I was like, fuck, is that Larry's brother in there? <laughs> And I kept like looking. I was trying to like make the screen bigger. No, that's not Larry's brother. Like some CGI shit right there. <laughs> I thought it was really cool. Have you done anything else afterwards in that realm? Um, I haven't. I've tried though, but but uh, you know, like like I've told you before, it's really hard to kind of yeah yeah start and stop. It's really hard to get something going once you have an idea going. You kind of go through with it, but it's like maybe it's just not going the way you want it to, and maybe you should like take a step back. You'll come back to it maybe in like five years. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. With me, like when I first I got out of high school, I couldn't wait to get out of high school, man. I was just like, the world is fucking mine because I hated high school. I like, I just hated school. Period. Yeah. Man. I remember one day, like I got I had my car senior year. I drove to school. It was like hella windy and rainy. I opened the door. The wind shut my door. I was like, well, this is a sign. <laughs> so I went back home. <laughs> this is how much I hated school. Like I didn't do shit. Like when I would flake on school and not go, I wouldn't go out and do shit. I would just stay home. Literally, I wouldn't do anything. I hated oh, wow. school, man. I hated it. But for me, it was always like uh, I never took a step back because I was like, if I take a step back, I'll keep rethinking. I'll just keep backing up. Right, I just right. kept like pushing forward because I was figured I'd much rather fall and figure out figure out how to get up mm-hmm. than just not try it at all. Right. It's the same thing with this. I mean, I really thought it would be a lot easier, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard as hell. Yeah. But uh, so I'm just amazed. Like you spent four years in New York. Other than expense, is there any other reason like you decided to come back to Sacramento? Uh, that that was that was the main reason, but the other reason was that I actually got into a car accident while I was looking for a job in in New York. You were you were driving in New York. I was driving my brother in law's car. How fast were you going? I wasn't even I wasn't even going that fast. Fucking bumper to bumper. Like the sixteen year old crashing into me. <laughs> <laughs> you should have helped him. Man. <laughs> I should have been influenced, right? I should have been a good influencer. He wants to go to church, man. (laughs) (laughs) No, dude, I was just, I was just way too shocked already. I think, oh, they do like this, like I can't handle these people <laughs> like that, that was really the big breaking point i got into a car accident right and it wasn't even my car it totaled the car it, it totaled my oh, brother lost car. Okay. yeah but it was an old car they were already going to get rid of it but it was worse because they were out of town like out of country even because they were doing they're doing some trip out in paris mm-hmm. and so it's like so I could, it sounds like they could afford another car yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so i was like yeah i just like, i don't think it's a good idea for me to stay so that's why i just so decided just, to come back a sec did it feel like you were starting over when you came back it did yeah. Yeah. It, but did it, it feel new when you came back? Um, because you left as like, a high schooler, right? Introvert. Mm-hmm. You went there, experienced this whole new world, probably had a new perception of stuff, and then you come back. How was that? Um, like coming back home, it felt familiar, but I also felt like I was kind of going back to my old self. Like that's what I was afraid of. That's that's the big thing I think everyone's afraid of. But um, when I did feel like that was happening, you know, that's when I started to kind of, I did my best to kind of, you know, break out of my comfort zone. Um, that's how I ended up getting a job at a casino. You know, the last thing, the last oh, thing on earth for me to get a job. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, like since working at that casino, that's opened me up a lot more too. Like I'm a lot more lax. Like I used to be, a, like even during college, I was actually a lot more serious. Like even in high school, right? You remember I was yeah. kind of serious. Yeah, man, chasing the yeah. grade and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty serious. I actually didn't do that well in high school. I don't know if you yeah, that. All fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was just freaking lazy, dude. I just didn't want to deal with high school anymore yeah, at that point. School, man. I was just so ready. I like, I remember I did boot camp. And then, like, uh, I did it in between uh, junior and senior because I was like, man, it's summer break. I can either go work with my parents at Jack in the Box or mm-hmm. I can do something that will benefit me after. Right. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just go do it. And then I did it. I was there. I talked to a lot of adults. That, I think that one of the best gifts that the Army ever gave me, mm-hmm. it gave me, like, an open door to all these grown adults who had right. things mm-hmm. outside. Right, they were right. either here because this was something that they never got a chance to finish. They didn't give it 100%. Mm-hmm. One of the guys actually joined so him and his wife could have free health care because she was really sick. Oh, okay. That was insane. There were kids who were passionate about this stuff and just like, you just listen to people. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you also like, I grew up in a household where you have you have a lot of respect for your elders. Mm-hmm. You talk with respect. You don't just say what, you know, mouth off. Mm-hmm. You know, you shake everyone's hand when you go somewhere. You say hello, greet them nicely and all right, that right. shit. I'm a hugger. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, I go over there and it's the same thing. It's not like snotty nose kids and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's beaten into you. Right. And then I come back, the first class I go to, you know, senior year, the teacher says something, one of the girls goes, What? What did you say to me? And the teacher can't do anything. <laughs> and I'm like, man, like, <laughs> this is so like different. I just like I would, and like I hated it so much, it, I felt like because of that, the last year went by even slower. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes when you write, right, the right. clock time goes by slower, mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, I cannot be, I cannot wait to be out of here. Mm-hmm. I was just so ready. I remember everyone that talked mess, like uh, when I joined, mm-hmm. towards the end of senior year, yeah, like, yeah. hey, how do I get into this? Because mm-hmm. no one had a flat out. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> But so like I mean, did you ever think about going back or like even going out of state at all somewhere? Um, I like in high school? No, hell no. <laughs> After you came back. After I came back? Um not I actually did want to go down to LA. Yeah, you know, to, to to continue doing film stuff, right? Because the only opportunities around Sacramento are like to work in like journalism or news and whatever. Yeah. And like like listen, like I study that stuff. I know how it goes, but I can't. I can't be like talking smack about celebrities all day, all the time, or exaggerating the news. Yeah, yeah. You know, COVID has like a bajillion deaths. I'm like, yeah. I mean, come on, we're here to report the facts, you know. But that's not what sells, you know, Actually, in that bullshit, industry. Bullshit sells, bro. Yeah, exactly. But but it's what sells, but it doesn't. It's, it doesn't sell for me. Yeah. You know, I can't do that. Yeah. You know, so I have a lot of trouble doing that. And instead, what I what I did was I wanted to like okay if I'm still stuck kind of kind of stuck in Sacramento maybe I could start branching out and uh, doing it, doing internet stuff or stuff yeah. over like that digitally right and you know YouTube around this time got acquired by Google um, and so I actually I originally started making like videos and guides for, like this this shitty online this shitty online game yeah. um, it didn't do that well at first but like it got released on like PS4 Xbox or whatever yeah. and then my views just start skyrocketing for some reason like where the hell are these people coming from right wow. and I started making like some money off of those videos I made like maybe $500 every year oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> a okay. year though but you know but, but uh, yeah and then after a while, I was like, man, I can keep playing this game. This game sucks. This game is shit. You know, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to keep going with it. So, so that was one avenue I started and just kind of, you know, went back down. And I did that throughout the years. Right? That's still up on, and down, right? I mean, that's still yeah. That, that channel's still there. But, is but there any progress in the, over the years? Um, I think a couple of views here and there, but that game is dead too, man. Yeah. Like, I think that game shut down like a year ago. Wow. But people were still playing it for some reason. So I was, you know, I'm just gonna leave the video up there. Yeah. I don't really care. Um, but. And so that's when I started kind of experimenting, like, okay, what do I want to do that will probably figure, help me figure out what it is I want to do and what people want, right? That's always the big thing. Um, And I I looked up some of my favorite YouTube videos, my YouTube channels, right? And uh, for a while, I really liked a lot of, um, like, there's these people who do documentaries, right, on, like, movies or, like, video games and stuff. Like, okay, I want to do that, but for something else that doesn't, that's never had that market before, right? Yeah. And so, um, for a while, I got into like Korean pop and Korean Korean music, whatever. It's, it's just a phase, right? And then I got into that. Start dancing too? No, I didn't start dancing. <laughs> but I wanted to be like that go-to guy where it's like, hey, you know, I really like this kind of song. Do you have any recommendations? 
you know, okay. and I would say, okay, like, I want to be like that kind of expert, right? To, to know that kind, to know that much music or, you know, to know, to know that much music, to be able to kind of tell, like, you know, if you like this artist, you can go to this one. That is you know? a hefty venture to take on, my friend. Yeah, it is. But the problem is, what I've realized is that people don't want that. Like, at least Korean music fans don't want that. What they want is, like, what is their favorite artist doing right now? What is their favorite artist releasing? You know, they want to know the, the up to the news, the, yeah. what's what's new going with their yeah. with their favorite stars, right? And that's when I realized, okay, now it's going back to the stuff I wanted to avoid to begin with. You know, well, you're not hyping that up like before, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't want to go that route because that would mean I would be specifying to a particular kind of audience, and I kind of want to broaden out, broaden out to like kind of in a way be that entry point for people who kind of want to get into Korean pop music or whatever and then for them to kind of say like I want to get into this but I know there's some crazy fans out there who keep telling me to like all this and that but it's really not that great or I don't it's not really my style and then I'll be like okay if you don't like this then you'll probably might like this give this one a shot you know I want to be that expert right but so I, I I made a video about this K-pop group, they got into like this really bad scandal where like one of their managers hit them off screen, like like during a live stream. One of their managers hit 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 their members off screen, right? Okay. And I was like, okay, that's pretty messed up. That's scandalous. Yeah, that's definitely scandalous. Right? <laughs> but but I what I wanted to point out was that you know like this company's been treating them like this like for a very long time. We just never noticed it, right? So I started digging back through all their footage, finding all the footage where it's like trying to like look up like look up under their skirts and all that stuff like just, just really like shady stuff right i'm like bro like people like a lot of fans don't really care about that stuff unless you're trying to sell them to other stuff but you know fans don't want that and so i wanted to point that out and that like i was only expecting maybe a couple thousand views right but that video shot up to seven hundred thousand views that's incredible yeah and i was like i'm not even, like i only made this because I, I, I did care about that group, but then at the same time, I want to point out something that was going wrong with this company, right? And so then, you did yeah. like the whole docu series mm-hmm. and raising all that stuff, right? How yeah, yeah. Um, making that video only took me like a couple days, man. Wow, but yeah. that's a, like full forge commitment right mm-hmm. there, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was just like sick and tired of just people presenting the wrong information yeah. or presenting information that. Like, they just did it because it's the new hot thing that they have yeah. to report on, right? And I'm like, you know, I, I don't want just this. Just clickbait stuff. Yeah, just yeah. clickbait stuff. I'm like, you know what? I want a full, like, I want to, like, fully look at this yeah. and just try to figure out things. You know, because, like, what, um, news channels have, like, that 24 news or whatever. Like, all those investigations and stuff, right? I wanted to do that, essentially, right? And that's why that video got, like, a lot of views. And it's still growing for some reason. I'm like, Bro, this, is a, this is a year old. This video is a year old. Yeah. People are still watching, you know? Uh, yeah, like I said, I was I already had a lot of plans, a lot of ideas of, like, what it is I was going to do after that video, right? Because, yeah. like, dude, like, like, when that... I think after the first week it hit like 10, 20k. I'm like, bro, like, that's just way too much, man. I think because people just start spreading it on Twitter. You said it's way too much. Yeah, it's it's way too what I was expecting. Oh, because like I, I didn't even I, I would that was even a goal of mine. So it hit twenty grand. You're like fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's nonsense. Yeah, I was seriously thinking about taking it down, but I was like at the same time like you know it's it's out there already. Just, yeah. just let it. So why would you want to take it down? Isn't that the whole purpose? It, <laughs> I know, right? The whole purpose is to spread the word, right? Yeah. But you're I like, know, man. The, the ten people I, I want can't, to see it, they've seen it. That's I can't good. handle the clout. I can't handle the fame, man. Yeah. Come on, that's too much for me, man. <laughs> I'm more behind the scenes kind of person, yeah. you know. You know. But <laughs> yeah, it's probably like the smallest amount of success to get to someone's head, like ten thousand views. <laughs> no, but yeah, I had a lot of ideas for for videos, right? But the thing is. I think what really stopped me from doing it was I started to realize that a lot of fans are like a, a, a lot of them are younger, right? And a lot of them like like this is like their lives essentially, right? No, and, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah like like which is fine. Like that's that's cool. You, you you do you you do what you want. You do what makes you happy, right? But at the same time, it's like I don't want to kind of keep feeding that, and I, I also didn't want to. I guess I just didn't want to deal with the kind of people who I felt they weren't open to a lot of things. And, and when it comes to like uh, K-pop fans, like they're very devoted to their groups, right? They're very devoted. Get, they're very devoted to their groups, to their to their celebrities, to their stars. Okay, whatever. That's cool. Like you do you. You support. You know. Oh, you support. support you want to. Yeah, that's that's oh, yeah. very similar. That's the same over like on the Bollywood side. I'm a big mm-hmm. Bollywood movie buff. Right? Oh, okay. 
Dude, you, man, you gotta you got share some movies with me, man. For real? <laughs> yeah, for real. I got a list, bro. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm open, dude. I'm down. Brother, I've been yeah. working from home for a year and a half. I've seen all of them. <laughs> I've seen all of them. Yeah, yeah, one. All of them. Um, but they're, that, that, I mean, like, I don't know if it's an extreme where, like, the, like, guys have other male actors' pictures. Like, that's all their profile mm-hmm. pictures. Right, right. It's the weirdest fucking thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> These yeah, are yeah. heterosexual males mm-hmm. and, like... Is it weird? Is it the same thing? Like they have Oh yeah, like it's a, dude, exact same thing, dude. Cause like a lot of friends I have on Facebook who I met through like the K-pop stuff, right? Their their Facebook profile picture are like their favorite members, like like from their groups, right? right. I'm like like you're a guy, but like, your Facebook profile picture is a girl, because like you know that's who their fans are. I'm like like dude, that's crazy. Like like I would like my Facebook profile picture will always be my picture. Okay, yeah, it will never be another another thing. I remember all like MySpace days. I was in middle school. Right. I was a big wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it would be the wrestlers. Yeah, of course. But then I was like, I don't know, 13, 14. You know? <laughs> like, if you're 30 years old and you're, you know, you got a picture of fucking Nick Jonas as your brother. <laughs> you know, it's different. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, you know, those kind of fans, like, I do respect them. You know, they support who they want. They do what they want. But at the same time, it's also very hard to get them to open up about certain issues or incidents yeah. that, that could be happening within that industry, right? Um, unless it directly affects their group. Mm-hmm. And so, for a while, I just didn't want to touch that. I'm like, yeah. you know, I think maybe there's like a medium line. Have you got any negative feedback? I've gotten a lot of people who, who like, who, who criticize yeah, the, the, the way. <laughs> yeah, dude, the comment section is crazy. There are some times where like, I moderate sometimes, not all the time, right. but if, if all they're saying is like the F word or whatever, dude, I'm just gonna delete it. I'm like, we don't, we don't, really? Yeah, no, cause like, I don't, like, like, I generally don't want the comment section to be like that. You know, people can say their opinion, whatever, but if you're just gonna say F you, F this, whatever, I'm like, bro, like, get out of here. This ain't Twitter, it's YouTube. <laughs> I, went on, I went on this spiel on, uh, cause I was, I was telling you, like, I went through a span of just being bored out of my mind. So I'm going on YouTube under like random videos and just like start responding to people. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you have like I think ten thousand comments. You have more than a lot of comments to respond to if you're interested. Yeah, there's a lot of comments on other videos. But I would pick fights with the ones that like the words were hella misspelled. (laughs) You can tell like they were still using a flip phone using T9 to like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you know what's really funny is that I I used to always kind of like. Assume for people too, like why don't they? Why don't people just like literally just reread what they type, right? Yeah. And then I realized that when I look at my demographics for that video, twenty percent of them are from like overseas. They're international, yeah. right? Because K-pop is just really big in general. So I was thinking, okay, maybe a lot of my viewers are from the United States because you know I, I speak English, whatever. It's, it's an English speaking video, but then a lot of them. English speaking are international too. So like a lot or a large chunk of demographics are from overseas. I'm like, okay. So I I understand why there's some grammatical <laughs> issue there. I'm like, that's fine, you know, because you speak another language and I can barely speak my my, my my mother tongue. So I'm like, props to you, okay, props to y'all who can speak another language and English. So if you have gr- grammatic you, man. yeah, grammatic comments or whatever, if it's all wrong, don't worry about but it. But the ones that I pick fights with I have high expectations. So <laughs> yeah, regardless, <laughs> still do your best to spell check, you know. Because a lot of people will say something about it, especially for me. Okay, so so in, in that video, uh, the past tense of debut is debuted, right? Yeah. But I I emphasize the T in debut, so I said debuted. <laughs> <laughs> and people give me so much shit for that. <laughs> Like so much shit for that. I'm like, okay, I get it, but I want to emphasize that they that they started their group a while ago. So I said debuted, and the more I hear it, the more people keep talking shit about it. Like, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna make it a meme now, dude. Just say debuted. Yeah, it's whatever. better to yeah. it. You get more reaction though. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. Like if people just talk shit, if people just talk shit about that, that's whatever. You know, but it also holds shit. their interest. You know. Yeah, exactly. If I gave the camera the finger. They're like, oh, what the fuck happened? You know? <laughs> right, 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 exactly. And so like. I I think there's always a fine line between the two, you know? Yeah, yeah you, you gotta, like, you really gotta just judge it for yourself, right? So that's, what is that, uh, what is that channel called? One Inch Barrier. One Inch Barrier. Why One Inch Barrier? Uh, so back in 2020, there was this, uh, this guy, Bong Joon-ho. He, he won, like, Best Picture. I'm glad you didn't ask about who that was. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, don't worry, I'm not gonna, I assume you don't know <laughs> worry about really it. Awkward. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he won Best Picture for Parasite, right? Like, Oscars this this film like award show where they only really hand out awards to like people from Hollywood or, or big yeah. things but this dude from South Korea wins it mm. 
mm-hmm. you know? And so when his speech, he said, um, you know, if, if you open yourself to uh, the one-inch barrier of subtitles, like, w- yeah. within movies, you, you'll be open to so many different great stories, right? Um, and so, so that was the idea behind the challenge. You know, one-inch barrier, there's subtitles that, like, and even then, for, like, for my reviews and all that other stuff, like, you, you're reading... So that way you can kind of understand what it is that's going on within that story. So, so. when you watch a movie, mm-hmm. what are you looking for? Like, are, do you just watch any and all Korean stuff? Um, I I do, but now that I understand my, my audience, I probably won't. <laughs> but but I'm very, very open. I'm very, very open to any kind of stories. So it's all Korean movies? Uh, for this channel, yes. How many have you seen so far? I've seen quite a few. I think on my, my list, it says I've seen over... 800 episodes of Korean dramas. Why Korean? Uh, so, the reason why it's Korean is because if I try to look up any other kind of shows, like from Japan or from China or, or even like from, from other internationally, it's very hard to find them because the, the title of their names are in their native language. Ooh. But for Korea, they always have an English title. Smart. They always have an international title, right? Um, I think ever since, I don't know why, but they've always been, they've just been doing that. It's a trend. And so that's why it's even, that's why it's even easier to find K-pop songs, right? Because yeah. it's like in Korea, their, their song title track is, is called differently versus if they release it internationally, it's called differently. That's why it's so easy to find K-pop. That's why it's so easy to find these dramas. You know, it's because they have a title where it's like people can reference to like, oh, okay, like if I want to watch this show, I know what this is called. What are some mediums that uh, people can watch Korean movies? Is it just YouTube or just any? Uh, Netflix. Netflix. Netflix for sure. Like there's a, there's a shit ton of Korean dramas on Netflix. Um, yeah, they've been like grabbing, nabbing everything because they know they have a pretty big audience. Oh, Netflix it. is on fire right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and they release subtitles like like with with those shows like right, right on point, right on time. Okay. So what are some of the movies that some of the types of movies that you said because like Bollywood movies go for like three or four hours. <laughs> you, like it's insane. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the stuff that like attracts you uh, in your? Um. So I suspense. Yeah, I, I like suspense, thriller, mystery. I'm also a fan of romance. I can see the romance if it's at least interesting. If it's like, if, if it's like some bullshit going back and forth, okay, I can't do that. Oh, but <laughs> like, like I don't want. I'll sit through it. Um, but I'm also like down for like action. Yeah. You know, action oriented uh, dramas, and I have I have dramas like you know that I like from from all those. So I watch dramas. because I've been watching so much Bollywood the last year. Everything I watch now is very predictable. <laughs> Even the jokes, the puns, oh, like wow. everything, and like especially like the comedy side because I'm generally like a pretty funny guy, right? Like I, I overthink things. I was like, oh, if this guy says something, one day I'll say this, you know, like shit like right. that. Yeah, I should like really stop. But like <laughs> everything be- is becoming predictable, so like mm-hmm. the interest isn't there. Now when I play movies, even newer stuff is just background noise. Mm-hmm. How are you with that? Uh, you know, it's funny. Like I used to be on that train too, where it's like I don't like the the tropes or whatever that they're doing. Like, it's very predictable, but at the same yes. time, it's like they kind of they're there because they define that genre too. You know what I mean? It's like like they're there because. It's what makes them that like action scenes have to have some like badass explosions and all that crazy yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Even though it's predictable, they just kind of have yeah, to have I mean, that. It's happen. Yeah. But uh, like, how are you with the predictability? Uh, with predictability, it's like yeah, you're yeah. doing reviews, so you have yeah, to be yeah. interested. Mm-hmm. You can't like voice your oh, dude, uninterest. There, there, there are some dramas I have a very hard time sitting through. Yeah, but they, are you listening to reviews? Because um, you're trying to create awareness, right? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm trying to make awareness of like the dramas you Sorry. shouldn't watch. That's good. Fucking scam likely, bro. I swear they're everywhere. Like I'm not making my student loan payments, bro. Just leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, but like um shit, what was gonna say? Sorry. No, it's all it's all good. Um Yeah, when it comes to dramas, like it's uh, when it comes to like predictable dramas, right? Um I can sit through the bullshit. Like the only way I can sit through them is when I'm trying to wear, I'm trying to make awareness, right, for people not have to sit through like terrible shitty dramas right. and not sit through terrible shitty movies, right? Um, so the idea of what I'm trying to look for is um, stories where it's like, because I'm the kind of person where like when I watch a movie or whatever, I just kind of sit through a moment. I don't try to think about what's gonna happen. But like if I do predict it right, then that's when I'm like like I fucking do it, you know? Like I, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew the father was gonna be the bad guy. I knew the mother was gonna be this and that. You know, for me it's more like it's more of an ego thing. Where it's like, you know, I'm I'm fucking right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> See for me it's just like, man, like uh, all of late eighties and like mid 
90s Bollywood is like the idea is the kid is the main guy he's growing up someone kills his dad or someone mm -hmm. rapes and kills his mother or sister uh -huh. so the whole movie is the guy grows up finds mm -hmm. a girl that he loves and then the rest of the movie is the chase to find the bad guy <laughs> so when they find the end, when he finds the bad guy he's like ah you killed my mother you messed up me killed my dad <laughs> bang bang and then there's like a laundry list of shit he's going through that the guy's done. But the guy's already dead after the second bullet, right. so you're just talking to yourself and shooting him for no reason. I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> it's like, you go to a pool party, right? You're already swimming. Someone, you come out, someone pushes you back in, like, I'm already wet, dude. Like, <laughs> the joke's over. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the one thing with uh, with one inspiring. I'm trying to steer more towards where it's like, like I said, like how I said I want to be the go-to guy for, for Korean pop music. Yeah. Now I'm kind of straying from that, but I want to be the go-to guy for Korean dramas or Korean movies where it's like, you know, I've seen this badass action movie, I want to see a badass Korean action movie, you know, I can already name one or two or three, you know, or, and then I don't want to sit through all this bullshit romance. Okay, I have one that is, or one that's like, okay, I, but I want a little bit of romance in it too. I'm like, okay, then I have another one for that too. Um, cause, cause like growing up, like, I never just had that, you know, like I want to get into something but I just didn't have the right people to go to. Whereas, like, they throw you some, like, weird ass shit at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm saying I'm that. Mm -hmm. I guess. Sometimes you just gotta find your own avenue. And right. Just, like, pers yeah, pursue yourself. Mm -hmm. How has the channel experience been? How long has it been up? A year? Uh, no, not even. It's, I think I started in May. Damn. Yeah, well, okay, so the, the K pop stuff, a year. I think that started in September. But, um,. Afterwards, when I started, when I tried to rebrand the channel to more Korean drama stuff, yeah. Korean movies, it started in May. So that K-pop stuff probably really helped you get off the ground. Right? It did, so. right, right, because the, the two avenues are very similar, because yeah. a lot of people do like seeing their K-pop stars in like Korean movies, Korean dramas. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm still talking about Korean stuff. It's not like people are going to start unsubscribing, you know? Is there, so what is your nationality? Mom. Is that... How big of a difference is it in the language? Um, it's it's pretty different. Really? I'd say, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, that's good to know. Yeah. So, even, like, I'm actually starting to learn a little bit of Korean here and there, because I just, you can, you can watch so much shit. It just kind of just yeah, sticks with you. Right? Yeah, yeah, it just kind of sticks with you. That's just how it is. Um, but, yeah, the languages are, are a lot different, but, uh, like I said, I'm still trying to learn it, still trying to understand it. I'm trying to get to a point where it's like, I don't need subtitles, right, to, to be able to keep watching it. How long are these movies? These, uh, the movies are not as long as Bollywood movies, <laughs> thank God. Horrible. But do their dramas? I, I've aged horribly <laughs> myself watching these movies last year. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the dramas, sometimes they're like 16 episodes, like an hour each. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. But some of them, like, dude, there's this one I've been watching since April. Yeah. It's like 120 episodes. Right? Are you doing episodic reviews, or are you going to wait for the whole thing? To I'm waiting for the whole thing to finish and just recap everything. Do you take notes and stuff? Yeah, I take notes. Okay, I was mm -hmm. going to say, that's a lot to remember. Yeah, that's, that's the only way I want to remember all that. <laughs> it's way too much. That's awesome. So, like, how long do you think you can keep this going? I, I feel like I'm in a very good space, mm -hmm. but it's just your own interest, how long you're going to be interested right, in. Right, right. Um, so, for a while, like, I've been doing it for, like, like weekly. Like, weekly reviews, right? But I've noticed, like, the views are just kind of just dropping here and there. Uh, like, some people are interested in a lot of things. Some of them are interested in nothing. Yeah. Um, and so, one of the big things I've realized is that, you know, once I understand what it is that people want, yeah. what it is they're looking for, then that's when I can start aiming towards it. You know, and most people who watch Korean dramas are, do, like, that romance stuff. And I'm willing to put up for, I'm willing to put up with a lot of romance stuff. I, I, I don't mind too much. But um, I always like a little bit more to it. Like there's a little bit of action or a little yeah. bit more mystery or, you know, serial. How worried are you about like going the direction that's like wanted for in that moment? Because that's kind of a compulsive thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, there's noise over here. I better just keep adding fire. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I know what you mean. How, how, how worried about, or are you like, I feel like if you get in that space, that could get old really fast. And sure. you could ignore this audience completely. Right. And then they just won't come back. Right. That's no, that's true. That's true. Um, well, I have noticed, though, there, yeah, I have noticed, though, there isn't that much of an audience for, like, people who watch K-dramas, right? Like, when they're on the internet, they just want to... They either want to know what happens, or they kind of want to. They want things explained to them if something doesn't make sense. Like some some dramas have like real shit endings, like it doesn't make sense. But when I watch, I'm like, yeah, I understand it completely. You know, <laughs> that's just no, like that's just you know. Sometimes like that just happens, you know. Right. Um, and so I want to be that guy where I can kind of explain things for them, right? And it seems like 
I don't think there'll ever be like a like a nonstop demand for that at least because um, just the way like Korean dramas are written. Yeah, you know, you I know? just thought of a really good Bollywood movie. I won't give it away, but like yeah. the whole synopsis is it's a family. Uh, husband, wife, I think two or three daughters, and one of the daughters is like raped and killed mm-hmm. by the son of a very top dog police officer, okay. top within that mm-hmm. state. And then the whole time, like, like the dad finds out, and kills the the son. This is some, the, I'm not giving anything away. Yeah. And the whole chase becomes to like hide the fact that they had nothing to do with the death. Mm-hmm. And the, like the the boys. Pops, who happens to be a cop, is mm-hmm. looking. Right, right. And like the lengths and bear, like whatever they go through to hide this. It's mm-hmm. insane. I'm gonna send that to you. It's a good two-hour watch. Right? Yeah, and it's very, very. I think that movie <laughs> in a very long time. I was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Whoever thought that this was a genius, bro. Like they sound no different from from a Korean drama. Like the thing you just explained to me, I could I see that as a Korean drama. Like that's how outlandish and yeah. ridiculous, like and dramatic, it's like it can be. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. The, the what got me is like the simplicity mm-hmm. behind like the way they shot it, the way they wrote the story. A right. lot of it is just facial expressions, mm-hmm. not a lot of talking. Right. Because it's like the daughter just died, so there isn't mm-hmm. going to be a lot of blabbering, right? Right. right. It just, it just because a lot of the movies get too loud in places it shouldn't be too loud. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, uh, they, like there's a lot of like they do a lot of lip syncing in the movies, right? <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like if the song is like low pitch, low tone, you see, you see the person just screaming, mm-hmm. and you see like the veins and stuff in their right. neck, like it's not adding up. Mm-hmm. But like the tone and the pitch of this movie, I was like, wow, this is like really intriguing. Mm-hmm. And they don't talk a lot, so it, it can't be like background noise. Right. You have to watch like the eye contact, mm-hmm. their eyebrows moving, facial expressions, yeah. and mm-hmm. amongst the characters. Okay, okay. I'm like, Oh, this is good. I want to send that to you. Yeah, for sure. But this is this is a pretty freaking amazing, Larry. Like, what? Uh, like, and how how do people find you? Like, what's your social media plugs and all that stuff? Yeah, man. So you can find me on YouTube, One Inch Barrier, and I actually plan to make a TikTok account. I know, right? Um, one barrier, one underscore barrier for TikTok. Because like, I realized that most of my reviews, people don't want to sit through. Like, people don't even want to sit through like ten minute reviews. You know, that's just how it is. I enjoy them. Yeah, I know. I know people do, but some, most of them, what I realized, with less than a hundred view counts, I realized people don't really. That's the that. weirdest no. fucking thing. I'm yeah, it is. Like Bollywood review movies, like <laughs> stuff too. They're like ten, twelve minutes long. I've already watched the movie. I, I have formulated an opinion, but then I'll go into this guy's mm-hmm. page and I'll be like, hmm, I wonder what he thinks. And I'll look at the whole fucking thing. I'm like, I'm not looking at shit. You know? like, yeah, yeah. So I get it, man. I yeah, think yeah. you're in a really good space. I appreciate you for coming, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been sure. really fucking great. I can't believe I just had a beer with Larry Moa. <laughs> one is beer or two beers and a mic, man. I appreciate you for coming on. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, and I wish you all the best. Yeah. Larry Moa, man. That's the cool.